Hey guys, so I wanted to very quickly talk about a build I will be leveling. This is the Poison Skyjari Pathfinder that I mentioned on Bay Class and I mentioned in the last couple of videos. Um, I was planning on playing this character much later into the league. However, uh, Kanet, one of the guys in my private league, was crafting bows for his bleed build and he accidentally hit a pretty decent starter poison bow. Um, it's got the tier 1 chaos damage, it's got a little bit of flat fizz damage, and it's got the uh, most important poison inflicted with this weapon deal 100% more damage mod. It's not ideal, I, it would be on a better base, and it could be a dark zone or something, but considering it dropped, I thought, you know what, sod it, I'm just going to go for it. Um, the Toxic Rain champion is perfectly fine, but I've been meaning to play this build for a couple of leagues now, and Ziggy got me really hyped for it, talking about it on Bay Class as well, so I'll just kind of talk about some tree stuff quickly. So, you can watch my progress on over the character, and if you've got any suggestions for me, you might be able to offer something to me, which might change how I do the character a little bit. So, I've got a few different trees planned out. Ones with Cluster Jewels, ones without Cluster Jewels. This is probably the tree I'm going to use as my main base. Um, so, it's got 1.1 mil combined DPS with the items I actually own, which is always important when you're in a private league and you have limited trade access. Uh, you're going Poison, Scourge, or Pathfinder, obviously, the main reason. Uh, Nature's Reprisal gives you um, Chaos Damage, Chaos Skills have increased AoE, very nice for Plague Bearer. Main reason why I want to play this build is to try out Plague Bearer. I haven't played a single Poison build since the rework. When you kill a Poisoned enemy during Flask Effect, the Poison proliferates to other nearby enemies. Very nice for Macula. And then Master Toxic... Toxicist? Toxicist? I don't... I want to say Toxicologist, that's a completely different word. Toxicist. Um, gives you more Chaos Damage with Attack Skills and Poisons you inflict during Fast Effect have 40% chance to do 100% more damage. So this plus the bow, just like loads of chance to do uh, additional damage. And then Master Alchemist gives us Ailment Immunity. Uh, we're picking up all the most important Poison Clusters, uh, being Swift Venoms, Toxic Strikes, and Fatal Toxins. If you want to do a more softcore oriented version of the build, you wouldn't ha have to go Iron Reflex, you could drop this entire section down here and just go further into just damage nodes. A lot of people go up into Shadow Star. Iron Reflex is another core part of this build. I've been doing a lot of Vol Molten Shell action this league and I've been having a lot of fun with it. I've been really enjoying it. And by having the uh, ailment immunity from Mass Alchemist, this lets us scale our flask particularly hard. And that's how you can see we've got actually 42k armor with very realistic gear values and just a Jade of Reflexes and a Stib Knight of Warding. Uh, a Stib Knight of Warding actually gives me more armor than a Granite Flask with this setup uh, because we're just scaling only Evasion Rating. If you had more armor on the tree, for example, if you went into Marauder Star or if you're using stuff like a Combs and you just had more armor and less Evasion Scaling, a Granite would be better, but Stib Knight also has more uses over Granite, so that's the main advantage there. I did plan out a Cluster Jewel tree. Now, this is obviously a very small Cluster Jewel setup. This is mostly for m purely mapping. Um, so you can get Unwavering Evil, which gives you Chaos Skills, Ignore Interruptions from Stuns. Getting Sun Immunity while channeling your Scourge Arrow would add a lot of defense to the build. It would be huge quality of life while mapping. Uh, Brushed with Death gives you Life Recovery on Kill. Again, huge quality of life and survivability while mapping. Adding Layers of Sustain is very important. Uh, and then No Witnesses giving you Chance to gain Elusive on Kill and increase Elusive Effect. And if you didn't know, Elusive gives you Phasing. Um, it gives you Spell Dodge, Dodge, and a bunch of Movement Speed very strong if you didn't want to go for that and you wanted to go for a more boss centric setup um or you just wanted to like swap them around for bossing maybe you could go for a small life jewel instead um i'd probably go for surging vitality you could also go for fettle fettle the note will give you 10 percent maximum life 20 flat life surging vitality instead gives you eight percent increased maximum life uh regeneration every five seconds regenerate 10 percent of your life over one second the build has very good just raw life values and very good mitigation. You see you've got 7k with base realistic gear, no combs, no real crazy shenanigans. Um, and then we're using all the armor scaling for most of our mitigation. Ideally, you'd have access to something like a Divine Flesh, and then you're converting a bunch of your elemental damage taken into Chaos, and then taking stacking max Chaos Res using stuff like Dark Scorn. Sad I don't have access to that right now, but that's that setup. You could do a Marauder Tree, which is something that Rise did last league, I believe. Might have been the League 4, I'm pretty sure it was last league. And the advantage of this tree um, is you get a bunch more just flat armor scaling. So if you're using stuff like Combs um, Chest Piece, using like a Granite Flask, this is very solid. Obviously, you can a bit of Max Res, you can get the Unwavering Stance to get the Sun Immune this way. 
However, since we can now get Sun Immune on Jewels, I'll probably go for the Jewel setup instead. But this is just an option of how you could do the build. And then the Shadow Start's like the most traditional thing that I see most people doing on stuff like Pee Wee Ninja. Um, it's very efficient, has a bunch of extra life, and it actually has an extra 500 flat life over my no cost dual setup tree. However, I think the no cost dual setup tree is probably tankier um, because it has access to a bunch more attack speed. Uh, and the faster you're channeling your Scourge, the more mobile you can be. And also, um, to do the Shadow Star, I had to drop both Arcane Chemistry and Druidic Rite. Uh, and the reason why that's important is I don't have a like minus 15 mana cost chess piece. I don't have any good like minus mana cost channeling amulets and rings and stuff like that. So mana sustain can be a bit of an issue in that mind. But by having Primal Spirit, Druidic Rite and Arcane Chemistry, uh, that gives me a bunch of mana recovery. I then also have a little bit of mana leech. I could also anoint into Lucidity for minus three mana cost and also some channeling skills deal 30% increased damage, which would be very, very strong. And um, I just think I'd prefer that setup. Also, this gives us better uptime on our flasks. The increased flask charges gained has good synergy with Nature's Boon, which has flask charges gained every three seconds. Arcane Chemistry has flask effect on there and reduced flask charges used. Anything you can do to just like creep stacking flask uptime and Pathfinder is very good. Also, just one quick note on Pathfinder. A lot of people say that they don't like playing Pathfinder because it's too spammy on the flasks. Pathfinder presses flask less than every other ascendancy. Because they've got uh, flask effects, flask effects, flask charge generation. You can also get loads of stuff with like flask duration. You don't, you should be pressing your flasks anyway. You should always be pressing your flasks. Um, they don't like last shorter, right? They, they, they last just as long or in some cases longer based on the node you take. So this whole like, I don't like pathing because I have to press my flask too much. It's rubbish. I don't know how this whole like piano pathfinder meme started. It, it's complete BS. But anyway, uh, these are just the setups I'm planning on. Mostly going for this tree or the cluster jewel tree. If you think I've missed anything super obvious, please do let me know. And again, I'm not doing the acro phase acro thing because I want to go all in on iron reflexes. Anyway, I'll be leaving this character live on my Twitch. So please tune in if you want to see it progress. Have a good day. Bye bye.